I'm Bev Adams. I'm an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I'd like to show you this cute little Halloween gift bag. I'm using some non-Halloween stamps, Lovely as a Tree. And I have the Itty Bitty Greetings, which has greetings for just about everything. It actually comes in two boxes, but I was able to squeeze it into one to save room on my shelf. I did get a couple of embellishments from the Holiday Catalog 2018. I got some of this glittered organza ribbon and these little spider embellishments. I'm also using the moon from the wood crate framelits, but you could use a circle punch instead. And I am using a cat punch. I'm using the gift bag punch board. To be honest with you, I found the directions for the gift bag punch board to be confusing. They do have the down and dirty directions here, but unfortunately those will be covered up when you're actually using it. So I made a set of directions that made sense to me. I can store these directions right here and then just set them up as a little tent direction as I'm working with it. And that's helpful. If you would like a copy of this, I'll have a link for that on my website. The gift bag punch board can make bags of several sizes, but they will all have this depth of the bag. You can make the fronts in small, medium, and large. That small, medium, and large depends on how long you want your cardstock to be. Small is 10 inches, medium is 11 inches, or large is 12 inches. The height of the paper can be anything. Of course, you're limited by the size of the cardstock, probably by 12. You will want to allow 1 and a fourth inches from the bottom flap. We're going to make the small bag so that I need a 10 inch long piece of cardstock. So. Just pull out the arm for the trimmer and cut it down to 10 inches. Save this scrap. In fact, I probably should have cut my 3 8 inch piece before I cut it off. So we'll use this later. As I said, the height can be anything. I want it to be fairly small. Uh, to make the scrap most useful, I'm going to cut it off at two and three quarters so I can make a couple of those smaller layers that I always use. I'll go ahead and cut those now so I, so I can go ahead and put those in my resources bags. You can learn about these on my website. So that leaves me with a piece of cardstock that's five and three quarters by ten. The, and the gift bag punch board comes with a scoring tool and you need to score all the way across and frankly I find it easiest to just go ahead and do that first. It reduces one step as you're doing the actual punching. And that also will give us a guideline for stamping. This is the bottom of the bag. That confused me when I was first learning how to use this punch board too. We're going to set the punch board aside for a minute and do our stamping. I'm using those bare trees and the Versamark stamp pad. You could use the Gorgeous Great stamp pad if you wanted to. And I'm going to stamp just above that score line. And the Versamark gives kind of a watermark look to it. I think you can see that. And I just went all the way across. A little more prep work. I'm going to use my lightest pumpkin pie stamp and blends and a scrap of vellum. I'm going to use the brush tip. This is the thicker line here. And I'm just going to color. I want this 
area to be at least one and a quarter inches. And I'm going to turn this over and color it on the other side. And I'll go ahead and punch this out with the one and a fourth inch circle punch. And while I'm punching, I've got some of this new black foil. I'm just going to punch out the cat. And I want to be sure and keep the punch straight up. Because I'm going to want that tail going off to the right. Bringing back my punch board directions and my punch board. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to tip my punch board a little bit to the left. I find it's better when you're scoring to score towards your elbow. So with that score line at the top, I'm going to line up the edge of my cardstock with the start line, making sure it's all the way up to the top. And I'm going to be making the front of the bag first. So I'm going to punch and score. We're making the small size bag. So find that track and just run your crease line at the small line. Move this score line to the pointer, to the start line. So we did the front, so now we're going to do the side. I'm going to punch and score the side. Now we are going to use that little gusseted side. This is an option. Now I'm going to move this score line to the pointer, the start line. We're doing the back of our bag. We're always going to punch and then score. Small bag. Move this score line to the pointer and the start line. We did the front side, back, so this is the other side. And we're going to score, and we are going to score those gusseted lines. And then we also need to score this flap, so we're going to move this score line to the pointer. And punch. Now I know I said I was starting with the front, but I actually like to have this as the front because there won't be any seams nearby. Before we assemble it, we're going to use the moon from the Wood Crates Framelits. I have my Big Shot, my Big Shot flat platform. This is a thin die, so I'm going to use the thin die adapter. My cut up plate, my cardstock, my moon. I don't want it too high. my relatively clean top. Make sure everything is in the space of the platform and run it through the Big Shot. Now if you don't have this die, you could just punch a full moon with maybe a one inch circle punch. I'm going to put this on the back. This is really adhesive of your choice. Then I'm going to add some glitter. I'm using the Wink of Stella brush. I don't want to splatter my cat. There's a couple of different ways we can splatter. We can kind of tuck the bristle into the cap and splash that way. Or we can splash this way. I think this gives you bigger flex and I want that for this project. We're going to go back to assembling the bag. So I do want to go ahead and crease all of those score lines. I think if you wait to crease the side cre gusseted creases, I think it actually works out better. I think it just works just fine to just kind of finger pinch those. Do a little trimming on this tab. I 
And then we're going to use strong adhesive. I like the tear and tape. I'm going to put one piece of tear and tape here. And then just the ends of this one. Remove the backing. And you should be able to just fold it any of those creases and match that up. Fold the sides down and the back. Try and get this as square as you can. And then you can use these, then you can use a bone folder or something to push those down. I do want to punch a couple of holes and I want the holes to be between the gussets. The punch board will have a reverse punch that you can punch farther apart, but I kind of liked the idea of just having them in and the I'm actually going to rub a little bit so I can see where those are. And I think we're ready to make our tag. I'm using pumpkin pie ink and I'm stamping trick or treat. And then I'm going to just snip it really close to the printing. And a little bit of adhesive. And I'll adhere that to the end of my little 3 8 inch strip to punch a hole near the end. And that will be easier to do before you snip that. And I'm going to just do a little bit of a flag end and chop off the end like so. I'm going to fold the tail of the cat back, add this with Stampin' Dimensionals so that the cat tail kind of goes, wraps around the bag. I just need a little bit of baker's twine, probably eight inches is more than I'll need. And a little bit of this very fun glittered organdy ribbon. This is so sparkly and pretty. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and leave that connected. Snipping a very sharp point so I can get it through the hole. And I'm getting one of these cute little spider trinkets. And they have a nice uh, dangly ring on them. So I'm going to lace that on and then lace it through the trick-or-treat tag and then put a layer in there so I can tie my bow with that going through. And this ribbon seems to make really lovely um, bows. It's got some body to it. It's not wired, but it almost has enough body like a wired ribbon. And of course my thread came out, but I can just lace that up again. So it might be easier to just lace it up when you're done. But I do want that spider on top of tag so you can see it and tie that in a little bow. And our trick treat gift bag is done. Isn't that cute? If you would like the directions to this project come on over to BevAdams.com. I will have the direct link for you right here on my video and also on YouTube there'll be a direct link to this project down below. Thank you for stopping by. Mm -hmm.